Okay, so I'm in. Uh, I've got another edition of Halftime Chat, and today we've got special guest, Mr. Kenny Whitehead. It's going to be great talking to him, hearing about his legacy with his brother, his father. They've had um, massive hits with their 187 and uh, forget I was a G. So it's going to be great talking to Kenny and um, just. Welcome on to Halftime Chat. Hey, Kenny, how you doing? Good, Namely, how you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. I'm doing well. It's uh, is that a is that a platinum plaque behind me? You? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not trying to flex. You know what I mean? It's, <laughs> it's no. You know what? You know that. I think this is the whole show. Is uh, it must be the music is. There's so many of us who want to get into the industry um, or who are in the industry, um, sign the stuff, but not all of everyone gets success. You know, getting one record release, not to talk of getting a platinum record. And, um, you know, in your case, yes, you, you had a, a father who was in the industry, but even others who do doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't guarantee your success. So we're here today to discuss the journey i mean just getting less so people get to know you your journey and and um and just taking us through the you know kenny whitehead and stuff but it's always great because my audience is international to say where you're from and where you were born and raised and, and we can go from there definitely um and since we're on the subject that happens to be the original ain't no stopping us now um double platinum okay record. Oh, so it's Bridget. not for what you guys. It's not for you and your brother. Yeah, that's not one of our joints. Um, that is my father's, and it was lost for a while, and it was regained. But that's another. That's another story. But um, we, like it says on the label, Philadelphia, Philadelphia International Records. Um, born and raised basically in Philly, moved around a little bit, Jersey, um, things like that. And I've been fortunate to spend a lot of time. I'm in other places like Brooklyn, right? You know, raising a daughter there, you know, spending so much time in different California. But Philly is the hometown. Yeah, Philly. I, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, it's amazing that it looks as like there's a very rich history of of of, of R and B music from Philadelphia. I mean, okay, recently we can talk about Jill Scott and um, the Roots and 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 that sort of neo soul that that came out uh, recently and Jaguar Wright and stuff, but Going back, I think Philly produced quite a lot of um, R&B artists and had, did they have their own record label at, at, at you said, Philadelphia International record label? Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. That, that would be uh, the, the infamous, the notorious uh, monster hit makers, Gamblin Huff. Um, oh, so they left Motown and went to Philly? No, they they actually never signed with they they worked with Motown, but they never signed. I don't think they signed with Motown. They they started their own thing in uh, Philly, okay. and um, I, they were offered maybe that's the rumor that they were offered to join Motown from you know, but they kind of saw their own way and they respected it. But it but that's their story. But I am of that. It was my father. Uh, that's the first. Well, so that we have Kenny Gamble and Leon Huff who was, Kenny Gamble is my godfather, who I'm named after, Leon Huff. Um, they were they were responsible for giving you groups like um, the OJs, Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes, um, yeah. Teddy Pitt from that group. Of course, McFadden and Whitehead and um, a lot, a lot, the Jones girls, a, a list of others. And they had great writers there, a staff of great writers. So they built, you know, that empire to make a lot of classics, classics that when you, you're like, oh, I didn't, I didn't know, you know what I mean? I didn't know yeah. they did that. So um, so that was in the 70s, from the from the early 70s to the late 70s, they had a lot of run. And then in the 80s, you know, we had the audition, of course, and we got turned down once, but uh, my brother and I struck a deal with Gamlin Huff 
for, on their new label. So we were fortunate to 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 definitely follow in my dad's footsteps with that. You know, he you know he, he didn't walk. He was always supportive. Don't get me wrong. He didn't walk us, and we had to we had the American Idol it just like everybody else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, because the first time we got turned down, we weren't ready. So that you know, like you said, we have to all make it on our own steam. Some people are like, "Hey, I'm not even in. I don't even know anybody like that." So it is fortunate. But um, from there, you know, we 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 did a lot of things. We had videos in the sand. And things died down a bit between that time, and then boom, you get our other stuff that yeah. Sold. So, but okay. But before we get there, though, so is it is in, in was it um in your household then with your dad, um, growing up with, with a dad who is into music? What was it like as a kid? Did you know what he was doing and stuff? I mean, after a while, after a while, you start to catch on. Um, they were writing a lot of songs for a lot of people first, like I said. I mean, they they were a group. They were a doo-wop group um, called the Epsilon. They had a group called Talk of the Town. He and his partner, uh, Jay McFadden. Uh, the, you know, both, to both of them, uh, rest in peace. Um, and a few, a few other guys, James Knight and um, Lloyd Parks. And they had a group called The Talk of the Town. Then they changed it to the Epsilons. And they have a video, actually. I'll send it to you once yeah. they, yeah. you know, with the, with, with the processes and, you know, <laughs> doing same suits they wear now, right? The slim ones with the high waters. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> the high cut slim suits. So they were into that, like stepping like the temps and doing all that. So uh, they got hired as writers for Gambling Huff. And um, they wrote for a while, writing for the OJs. Um, you know, Harold Melvin and the Blue Nose, Teddy Pendergrass, Melba Moore, producing the Jack, producing them, writing with the Jacksons when they did their album in Philly. So finally in 79, they got a chance to do their thing because they were just burning up, writing all these hits for everyone else. And I think um, Ain't No Stopping This Now was supposed to be maybe on the OJs. And they just, they just happened to uh, just say, hey, we coming out, you know, we ain't not gonna be like little worker elves anymore. We're gonna yeah. get our hit out there. So that's what they did. Not and they and they hit it out the you know they hit it out the park. I mean, when you think of the industry now, people would say if you can start writing hits, you have ownership and publishing. <laughs> if you could, if you could, if you're writing hits and you have ownership and publishing, and you without the work, that's probably more ideal. But did they see it in that way back in 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 in, in those days? Did they did they have did they know about the business to know? Look, we're writing the hits, we're owning our stuff. Well, you know, of course, people as as time goes on, people learn more, you know, and um, you don't you don't know as much as you do now, and, you know. <laughs> but I mean, everyone was learning too, you know, including the CEOs and. You know, everybody was learning. So it's not like everybody, it's like like any of them, those people from, you know, those neighborhoods, those, you know, urban neighborhoods that they all came from. Yeah. It's not like they were raised to, but they found out and they, and they got to know. Now, I mean, of course, there's horror stories about people, you know, not handling their business right. And, yeah. and, and I guess um, ultimately paying the cost you know, or having someone, you know, uh, swoop in and take care of your interest for you. you know? yeah. In other words, you know, and then there's some stories about people who do, who do, you know, just things to people. But yeah, people don't, people still have to get to know yeah. the business. That's what I would say to everybody. Just get to know the business. Read, read it again, get used to it. It's not something you're going to read one time and like, you know, publishing and things like that. Yeah. Unless it's like that, unless you're some sort of genius, but it's something you have to get used to and, and you'll get, you know, used to it. So, but, but, but definitely um, people, yeah, people didn't know as much as they, it's not as accessible to, right? You have to go to a library to get that stuff back. Then. Yeah. But uh, the reason I asked is more so the, when your dad, you know, was you know, writing and performing in those days, and when you and your brother came around, did they sh did they talk about? So they, you know, that's sort of an education to say if you guys decide to go down this path, these are things you should know. Man, they hardly talked to us about doing music. You know what I mean? Like, 
it wasn't like they weren't they weren't teachers of like the scholar type like i have some uh colleagues of mine who are in the music business producers they were like raised in jazz clans and you know what i mean like yeah. like my carlos mckinney very great producer worked with uh the dream rihanna beyonce he works with, and he's like brother to me so i really like know his family and he was raised with you know the, a bunch of thelonious monk you know uh wow. types and he still he still knows how to make a you know a relevant record to this time you know but he still is a classic of a um player and he was kind of he grew up in that way i grew up in the in the school of kind of like watch it it wasn't any really classical trainers about people was just vibing and feeling themselves and they yeah poets and writers and musicians who some of them were trained but the people that you know in my family like my father he was never classically trained or anything like that my mother was my mother was a big deal around the house when it came to the music because she was a color total soprano opera wow. singer. she wasn't really like hello my, my name's but she knew her crap yeah. and rest in peace to my mom anita whitehead anita yvonne whitehead she she was a big uh force when it came to teaching us gospel songs and things like that and making sure we were tight making sure my brother and i could perform when we really found out we wanted to do it it wasn't until i was like seven eight, eight years old and we were moving and this guy that was helping us move played the bass his name is barry he's, he's on my facebook barry thompson and he and he just he heard us in the garage messing around mm -hmm. and um you know ain't no stopping his man was out and all that stuff by then well, we just hadn't been like, you know, these are going to be my child prodigies. Nobody pushed that, that on us. But we would be in that garage like, you know, I had a little Snoopy piano, a little Peanuts gang piano, and my brother had a nice, he had a real drum set, though. And um, Barry just heard us and was like, stop moving for a second, you know, boxes everywhere. And he pulled out his bass because he kept it with him. And he taught us these songs, man. Like one was called The Cost of Living. One was called Life as a Stepping Stone. There were like all these positives, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, coming from, you know, my dad and them guys with those type of songs, they had some pretty good progressive songs too. Cause, and it was kind of hip and it was funky too. I like the flavor. We're still leaving the 70s now, like just ushering into the 80s. So we actually sang those songs to get our deal with Gamble Health. We, did, we never cut those songs, but. They were always some good songs. And we always, I always tell, I always tell Barry, even on Facebook, that I credit him for inventing the Whitehead Brothers as an organized group. Wow. Because we arts and you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, yeah. Real, you know? when, so when he was when he was when you guys were, were forming your craft and you and you were singing, um, I take it your parents would notice that you are you could sing and, and or but was it more like enjoy the singing but you know i want you to go to college and and and, and become a, a doctor what was the <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah my, my mother you know my dad was 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 on the run a lot so you know okay but we catch up with him and you know when we could he was on the run a lot and hey but um my mother wasn't you know she she was she was strict on certain things but honestly we were just bad shit crazy in, in our house. So <laughs> after a while you knew somebody was gonna be something because we was just cra we knew we just entertained the heck out of each other. Like if you wanted to laugh and be on the floor, yeah. you'd be like, these are crazy. Like we, you know, we we'll, we put on shows for each other. We do, you know, we laugh, you know, we don't tease people, but we have a lot, we had a lot of people that came into our circle, a lot of people on there, and they were funny too. And yeah. we just were just everybody famous you know what i mean when you came around us you was famous too not that we were famous you were famous along with whoever was famous because we didn't we never looked at ourselves my, my mom was a great singer had some dope songs she kind of stepped back for my brother and i to kind of work and manage us but i'm telling you, she and beautiful lady great voice strong voice and taught us how to sing from that diaphragm you know okay okay she was really tight on, you know, really singing and, and know, she knew her stuff 
on on so many levels, even beyond music. But she she was responsible for us being able to you know have a command performance. Like if you like, hey, why hit brothers do something right now? We don't have to scramble. Oh, wait a minute, hold up, John. We'll just bam bust out. Like there wasn't nothing. You know, my mom, and my mother had us like that. But no, you you know. It's a difference between like, you know, me, I was always, you know, into my toys or doing something. I was playing with Star Wars toys <laughs> or trying to make a car or a robot. Or, but when it came to music, it was something I could be like, you know, I could, I didn't have to be shy or an introvert. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that, you know, because my brother was always crafty and everything, you know, doing yeah. talent. Oh, See, that's another asked that question he said when did not to cut you off you said when did people so my brother started getting into talent shows and, and crap okay. used to do talent shows acting we used to do bill cosby and sydney portier uptown saturday night like the bar scene yeah yeah. We, so we were like when doing that too like when talent shows so yeah what's what, what was the what, what what's the age difference between what was the age difference between the two of you my brother has me about three years Okay, so he's already three years. Okay, so the the idea of, of the um, when you're doing the talent shows, the idea of actually being a duo uh, <clears throat> at that point in time with them. I mean, I know your your dad um, wasn't in, in a sort of duo, but around what year was it when you decided that you know maybe we can come together, you know, your brother and yourself, and 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 make something happen. You know, my father unfortunately was incarcerated for tax evasions and um for tax evasion and um you know we were always we were already kind of having we weren't living in a mansion anywhere even before that even when my father's record out we were in like a row home you know three-story row home it was a nice house we had it hooked up nice but it was right there accessible to the hood in philly you know so when um you know when we we realized like um I think I think it was just that separation of um like man he's 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 he, you know it wasn't like he was there there before that but still him leaving that put a lot of pressure on my mom to earn you know and and in a sense that kind of saved the family too you know for us getting a deal because we didn't spend our we didn't save all of our money we paid rent with our money and things like that, you know? So we were always like little men. Oh, we didn't, like, we never were like, yo, I can't go buy no sneakers with my money or I can't do this, that. you know, we have to pay our rent with our deal money, but I felt proud of that, you know? Yeah. Um, so to my brother and so. We have a sister, uh, Dawn, in between us too. And I have a, through my father, I have some brothers and sisters and they're amazing. We all know each other. Okay, but generally you, it was yourself and your sister and your brother that grew up in the household. Um, yeah, my father's marriage. You know, my dad only. You know, he he was married. They married early, like when they were kids. Yeah. <laughs> what you were musicians, huh? <laughs> yeah, man. They knew it. Well, you know, when they when they were interviewing and my mother was going, she was she went to settlement music school and when she graduated, they said, Well, what are you gonna do with me? She said, I'm gonna marry John Whitehead. <laughs> they already knew that already. And they, she was my mother well, we had a place in Philadelphia called the Uptown Theater. So that was like the Apollo mm. of Philly. So, you know, uh my mom used to go in there because she was cool with Harold Melvin and he was kind of an OG and would look out for her. And, you know, um, so she she um, met my father there, I, I believe. And, and, and from there, it was just like, you know, love at first sight, you know, like, <laughs> they were like, you know, but, you know, he was, my, my, my dad was, he was, he was, he was on the go, man. My dad had a lot of energy. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, great, great. He was. You wouldn't expect that type of pen or his penmanship to come from him because he's just always. He chills. He, he he used to chill, but he was always like you know, on a move. Like my dad couldn't say. Uh, yeah, God. You know, if he hadn't have gotten you know unfortunately killed, <laughs> I don't think he was gonna die from old age anytime soon. Because my dad was. My, my dad goodness. was. 
yeah, he was he was cool, man. You know, as you, know, you talk you talk about him, you just I keep hearing the Temptations. Papa was a Rolling Stone. <laughs> it comes uh, to mind. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah, and and everybody loved him. It, nobody resented. It wasn't that type of thing where it's like you wasn't there for us. Like yeah, you knew my dad. Even even being one of his children, you knew him or or his wife's like my mom or you know any of his love interests through his life you knew him yeah but not saying like he could do whatever he wants and this and that but you knew him and you know what we still all enjoyed the time yeah. that we had you couldn't yeah. give up pass up that chance to be around him you know same thing as my mother they they or my big brother they was like you know they were all it's like a parade you know yeah they were all and I don't mean always loud or talk, but it was just something always interesting about being around them. And um, you know, I enjoyed I enjoyed the time I had with all three of them, you know, on this earth. And you know, we all have our time. Yeah. So um well, I'm honoring their name and until I join them in in Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, not to, not anytime soon. Um but yes. yeah. like not today. Yeah. I, 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 I